Hey, what's up, everybody? Coming to you with another vlog and uh, from the tiny house. And I am wanted to show you guys kind of a day in the life of what a tiny house uh, off-grid living situation is like. Just a small little disclaimer here that obviously the day-to-day -day life is going to change day-to-day. -day. You know, the routines change, especially now that I'm like still kind of setting up into the tiny house. I'm only like a month into this, so I'm still figuring things out. I've lived off-grid before because I lived in two different vans. Uh, full-time traveling around and mostly west coast but i am doing a culture shock i guess to myself because i grew up in the suburbs i spent a lot of time in cities even when i was in the vans i was predominantly in cityscapes or suburban state uh you know places so now that i'm like out in the country or in like a like my town is like 1100 people it's a little bit of a different change for me so i'm still figuring things out in that regard. Obviously I have morning routines just like anybody else, uh, you know, taking the dog out and uh, I have my coffee here. Um, this is off grid. You might actually be able to hear the inverter just kind of like the fans we're just on right now. That's just cooling itself down. Uh, it's in that cabinet back there. I can actually show you my setup. My ladder is, is up right now because I'm about to get up into my loft space to get a little bit of work done. <laughs> piece of paper on the electrical system because I still haven't done any like markings on what each breaker is represents uh, this is all of my I don't know if you can see it here um, but these are all my settings my battery level uh, solar's coming into the inverter uh, charge controller and that's going into everything else my battery blah 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 I can go right up and down here if I want to with figuring out I got 36 amps coming in. I got 1.9 kilowatts coming in. I'm still kind of like getting up in the morning, doing my morning routine stuff. So it's still morning time. Uh, but that is kind of my electrical system make this and making it more off grid. Uh, we'll get more into the off grid capabilities here in a little bit. I'm gonna have my coffee. I'm gonna go up into my loft and get some uh, work done on my computer. Uh, I need to uh, answer some emails. I need to do that kind of stuff. So that's kind of the morning routine stuff take the dog for a walk, and then I'm gonna head over to the gym and get a workout in because that's really my next big project is this right here. I need to, I put on a lot of weight during the building of this. I took a lot of time off of the gym, not working out, not exercising, and definitely not dieting correctly. I was eating out a lot. I was eating just crap food while during the building process. So my next big project is me. I put on at least 20, 25 pounds. So. I need to shed that off as well as just get back into shape. We're gonna actually go over to the storage unit and grab something. So let's pick this up over at the storage unit. Well, I lied to everybody already. <laughs> Sorry. This is not a day in life. I mean, it is and it isn't. So it's not gonna be one continuous day. It's gonna be multiple days. The reason is, is because I got caught up in doing work in my mini loft. Next thing you know, it's like three, four hours go by. And I'm like, crap, I still haven't gone to the gym and done the rest of the stuff I needed to do today. Part of the whole day in the life video is actually me showing what I have a huge water tank back there. I got my tools back here. I have a diesel tank back here. Part of my day in the life is gonna actually show these things working and why I have my truck full of them. By the way, if you watch my last vlog, um, I walked through all of my property and I was showing you guys and sharing with you guys the plans that I have and the things that I want to do. I'm pretty sure I got some poison ivy on my arm right here. Um, and that sucks. It's itchy. And I wanted to come over here and grab this guy right here. Now I am picking this up. I think it's a little less than 50 pounds. I think I may have found the best portable power station that you can use in an overlanding rig, or maybe a van, or anything of that sort, right here that I'm leaning on right now. The company, the brand, is called Yoshino. I have never heard of Yoshino, and they reached out to me and they said, check out our solid state lithium battery power station. And I was like, guys, that doesn't even exist. I don't know what you were talking about. Then this came in and then they sent me a bunch of literature on it and I was blown away. Now, listen, I'm not going to take this entire video and kind of talk about this. And there's actually a few other videos online about the breakdown 
how to use this, uh, full reviews on it. This is more about showing you guys what is out there and what is possible for you. Now, Yoshino has a couple different options of size. This one is the, the B4000. And, you know, it has all the literature here that we're gonna go over here in a minute real quick. And, and, and she wants to be in the video. She always wants to be attention. Hi, honey. See, even Glacier's excited about it. Good girl. Like I was saying, just the comparison of what this does compared to some others that are on the market. I'm going to reference just this because I have not memorized all of the specs on it. That this is weighing in at 50 pounds, a little bit heavier than 50 pounds, but 50 pounds will just round to that. The closest portable power station that is the capacity this does for power is about 100 pounds. Half of the weight, but the same amount of power, which is why I was saying right at the top of this segment that this possibly could be the best portable power station for car camping or even like a, a, a van life setup if you wanted to use a portable power station for van life. Capacity on it is 2,611 watt hours, so 2,600 watt hours. Now I know everybody wants to convert that to amp hours. If you want to convert it to amp hours, they're saying it's 54 amp hours, but that's a 48 volt. So technically you want to actually multiply that by four if you're going to reduce it to 12 volt. If I did my math right there, so that's around 200 amp hours. But here's the thing, everybody, when you start talking 48 volt and 12 volt and 24 volt, just go off of watt hour. Watt hour is the same as amp hour. It's just everything that you have in your house has a watt rating and an amp rating. So you want to make sure that you want to go off of the watt. Now, I'm not doing an entire video on wattage and amperage and voltage and all that stuff, but you can find any device that you have and you can actually find out what the watt hour is on it. So for a quick example, I have the Brava oven or even a lot of people have the induction cooktop. An induction cooktop at highest rated wattage output is 1800 watts, same as my Brava oven. Now for if some reason I have no power in here and my batteries give out of my tiny house, like I am living off grid, I can have this stored in here securely because look at how big it is. It is, it is not that big at all. And I can now cook any of the food that I need to. I can run devices, I can run my computers, I can run everything I can off of this unit alone with the 2600 watt hours. The reason I am as excited as I am about this is number one, it's only 50 pounds, 55 pounds. The portability factor of it, and I have an all-in-one unit that I'm sorry, I miss camping and I want to either convert my truck or I might be trading in my truck to get a different vehicle to go car camping in. And this unit right here will be able to power everything that I need. On top of that, I have seen some videos online of some other people's powering their entire studio spaces, running air conditioners. So yes, you can run large units like an air conditioner or in my case, what I wanna do is I wanna actually keep this to run my off grid shop in. I wanna have a shop space where I can I can have storage, but I can also get power tools in there like my miter saw or my table saw or other devices that I need to plug in. All the other portable power stations that I have tried, with the exception of two, but both of those have wheels, which means they are heavy. Those other portable power stations can't charge or they can't run a table saw a miter saw, they can't run, it's too much power for that. And the, the ones that can, they're too heavy. The AC ports are right down here, and there's only, there's only two, you only need two. And they're rated for 4,000 watts in total. The surge on it is 6,000. It also has a 30 amp plug, and then we're gonna flip it around here. And we've obviously have a light. I had to wake it back up. And then you have DC power, USB, uh, two USB C's, two USB A's, has an app. You can control this thing all through an app. 
It is an amazing, an amazing, an amazing portable power station. All right, so just to end this section of the Yoshino portable power station, I was gonna to talk to you guys about lithium iron phosphate versus lithium solid state. The solid state, the biggest difference is the, there's liquid in a lithium iron phosphate. Even I'm gonna be getting confused here. But the liquid in a lithium iron phosphate actually cools the battery. I did not realize that the the power of a solid state battery, I didn't. I do believe that this is going to be the future for lithium, is having a solid state battery. From Lithium iron phosphate will always have a place, um, but the battery technology is going to continuously get better as the years progress, and they have worked the problem of fire protection. So that is one of the main reasons why we wanna actually go towards a lithium solid state battery more than lithium iron phosphate. And then just lastly, the weight. The weight, obviously, you see it here firsthand that this is only 50, 55 pounds, whereas the biggest competitor to this one is double the weight, plain and simple. Make sure you go check out all their other ones and there will be a link in the description below for everybody to get a discount off of yours. Uh, so check it out and let's get back to my day in the life of uh, you know tiny house living, off-grid tiny house living. Just going out here again to the gym. Like I said, one of my biggest things that I want to work on is myself I'm trying to get in better shape. So it's another day. I'll let Glacier do her business here in a second. Ugh. Now, one of the biggest misconceptions, you can load up, sweetie. You can load up. One of the biggest misconceptions about small town living is the amount of stuff that we have to kind of just do on a day-to-day -day basis so i have a generator right there and again this goes back to off-grid living now i have solar up on my roof i've got 3200 watts of solar on my roof and on a on a good sunny day i can be pulling in easily over 2000 watts of solar however i have this beautiful oak tree that is blocking second half of my day so I have to call in somebody. We're going to have to get a cut down. I might cut down a couple others in there. I think I talked about this in another video that I'm going to be putting in the container house that I want to do. There's going to be a road that goes up there or my driveway that goes up to that container house. So until I do that, there are some days, especially more of an overcast day like today, that I don't want my batteries to drain down to a point where it's going to be uh, not good. So I did buy this generator as backup power just in case I need to recharge my batteries because you know everything in there is for the most part electric. One of those things that you have to do. So I have these propane tanks that I have to go fill up. That's part of my uh, my chores today. Fill up the propane tanks. You might also see a 50 gallon water tank back there. Again, the house is off grid. I need to make sure that I can fill up the 100 gallon water tank that is on board. So I'll show you a little video I did on on my phone where I took, where I went and got water, filled up the 50 gallon, and then I had an, a little electric pump that I pumped the water from the truck into the house. I did that late at night. I'm sorry that the, the, uh, the lighting wasn't the greatest, but I have 100 gallons, like I said, on board, and that's a 50 gallon tank. I can fill that up two times and I can fill up my tank. But those 100 gallons of water easily last me two weeks, three weeks, depending on how much laundry I do. And I'm still learning about the different cycles of the laundry that I'm doing. So the other day, I used one particular cycle of laundry, and well, I ran. I, I used way too much water. It was easily like 25 gallons worth of water. It was stupid. So I need to learn the different cycles and what they do on that particular model that I have. The other chore that I have to do, you can see it right down here. That is a 14 gallon diesel tank. I have another five gallon diesel tank right here. Until I have a full setup, this is my 58 gallon diesel tank that goes into and you can see the line right here now i have it just waterproofed off right now because i went to go i have to tap it pretty much but i wanted to waterproof it off so there's no water going inside so i have a trash bag that's kind of taped over the hole where the um where the line goes into the fuel gets pumped out of that and into my heater 
uh, for my diesel heater and my, my hot, my, my floor heating, as well as my, uh, my forced air heat and my hot water, you know, just some maintenance issues, no big deal. Um, but as you can see, I, I, I have things that you have to do throughout the day. You got to get the propane, you got to get diesel and make sure your diesel tank is filled. You know, uh, another thing that you have to do is I have trash cans over here. There's no trash pickup in small towns. You actually have to go to the transfer station, transfer station, and you need to dump your trash. Um, you know, everybody in my town has a permit and we have to do it just like any small town living. My dad was here over the weekend and I can't wait to actually start the shed. We kind of started the planning of where I'm going to be putting the shed, how it's going to be when I worked out. Um, it, you know, we talked about if I'm going to be buying a pre-made one or if I'm going to be building my own, probably going to buy a pre-made one, spend the extra 1200 bucks and get a pre-made one. So all the parts just get delivered right to my place here. And then I can just boom, 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 put it together and call it good. Um, and then let's finish off the video by showing you kind of like where I set up inside of my, what did Nick call it? My buddy Nick called it something. The content corner. I think that's what he called them. Like the content corner. I'll let's go up to the content corner and you guys will see that I'm going to go to the gym first, but I'm going to go back up to the content corner and uh, I'm going to get a shower and we're going to actually work on a video that I need to, to work on. But that is where I create content and where I'm starting my podcast. So let's go up there and I can show you guys uh, what that little what that little space is like. It's pretty cool. OK, now, everybody, I'm up in my uh, content corner, which was um, given that name was given to me by my buddy Nick, like I said. Um, what you can't see is my computer is actually right here in front of me. Do a video of me even, you know, just editing the video that I've, that I'm working on right now. So I up in my loft space right now, as you can see, there's, you know, beautiful scenery outside. Um, I, this is an operating window so I can get some airflow in here. Can't wait until fall comes in where I'll be able to have some nice foliage in there. And then winter will be a beautiful winter wonderland. And then obviously I've got my whole tiny house below me and usually glacier is right underneath me however sometimes she'll go way over there <laughs> but this is kind of the my work zone my area where i can kind of separate myself from the rest of the house i can get work done i can get work done on my computer um i also set the camera up because this is going to be my my podcast studio it's going to be a new playlist it's already on my channel, but there's gonna be a new playlist on my channel that's called They Just Don't Get It, which is going to be a new podcast that I, uh, I'm gonna start recording here soon, and this is gonna be set up for. Now, I'm gonna be recording them at night because I want it to be, uh, have a different lighting. I want more of a dramatic lighting. So I can throw up an image of what I posted on my Instagram recently, which is going to be kind of the setup. I gotta make some tweaks to the lighting. I gotta turn the light back here, but this was always my like dream and my goal when I designed my tiny house was to have this little space to kind of get work done and do some designing uh, for the container house. Or maybe if I work for a company, I can sit up here and I can design for them. Uh, or I can work with clients and I can design for them. So this will be kind of the birth of not just my podcast, but the birth of Ghost Design and Build, which will be um, my business moving forward with um, having my shop space right outside where I can make uh, some items that I'm gonna probably be selling on Etsy and uh, whether they're van life tables or coasters or just whatever, charcuterie boards, I don't know. As you can see, I've got plenty of room. My table overhangs. Uh, or my desk, I should say, kind of overhangs, you know, four and a half feet going this way. And I've got about 30 inches going there. I got plenty of room. So this is my, this is where I spend a lot of my days. If I'm not outside with Glacier, you know, hiking or something, I'm up here doing work or at the gym. I'm day in the life. Tell me what you guys think. Make sure you like, subscribe to the channel. I've got a lot of things going on. Obviously, I do my vlogs when I can. I always will be doing the tours. I will be doing a lot more traveling for tours in the very near future. Uh, and I'm going to be adding uh, a lot of Airbnbs. I'm going to be adding uh, some different tours to my repertoire. And then the podcast. Uh, and then I'll be also mixing in some building stuff, some ghost design and build stuff into my channel as well. So if one category excites you, great. Then you can just focus on that one. But if all the categories excite you, then check out the, all the playlists that I have as well. I will see you guys next time. Later.